Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a 360 video designed to put you inside the data. The viewpoint is a desert, far from humans, and if you look up or point the camera up using the controls, you should be able to see a sky full of stars. And if you look in the right direction, you might see a bright spot moving. That's the International Space Station. Passing overhead, it's one of the brightest objects in the sky, brighter even than Venus. But it's just one of many objects, and I want to show you just how many satellites are up there, so I'm going to make them all visible to your naked eyes. Just look around and you should be able to see dozens of satellites, thanks to the superhuman vision that I've bestowed upon you. This is from a database of over 2,000 active satellites, ranging from experimental cube satellites in low Earth orbit to giant communication satellites in geostationary orbit. You can figure out which way is south by looking for the rainbow-shaped arc of geostationary objects that are sitting still. Since I placed the viewer in California, you can see that the arc gets broken up on the right side. That's because geostationary satellites like to be located over countries rather than the empty Pacific Ocean. How about we highlight the weather satellites? There's a couple of those visible in geostationary orbit. But highlighting the communication satellite shows us a lot more of those. To really show that we're, they're geostationary, we can actually speed time up and make things move faster. Sure, they wobble a little, but they don't move much, especially compared to those in low Earth orbit. Between low Earth orbit and geostationary orbit, we find a lot of navigation satellites, like GPS or the European Galileo system, or the Russian GLONASS, and the Chinese Beidou network. But most of the objects flying by quickly are in low Earth orbit. So in this orbit, there's things like communication networks such as Iridium, Orbcom, Starlink, and various others. And low Earth orbit is a fantastic place to get information on the surface of the Earth. So here we also find lots of Earth monitoring spacecraft, including hundreds of Dove CubeSats that image the Earth on a daily basis. Space is also important for military operations. And in low Earth orbit, there are a number of military satellites. Not all of these actually officially report their locations, but amateur satellite trackers can follow them nevertheless. And since we're talking about military activities in space, I've highlighted a number of pieces of space debris that are the result of anti-satellite weapon tests in the last 20 years or so. After a satellite is destroyed, it remains in orbit. Indeed, any debris tends to stay in orbit. So here we've got a total of 15,000 pieces of extra space debris on top of the 2,400 or so actual active satellites and every single one of these is a potential threat to another satellite. These objects are anything from meter long boosters used to put uh, satellites into their final orbit down to objects a few centimeters or across which are perhaps fragments or discarded pieces of hardware used in the launch process. And so this is what you could see if you could see every single object in orbit around the Earth. And this number could double in coming decades as more and more communication satellites get launched into low Earth orbit. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.